Hey everyone, after many requests, I decided to make a fully functioning app that will actually take bookings. So we're going to be building this clone of ClassPass in order to do that. So what I mean by this, we're of course going to have this cool landing page. And if we click on the browse option, we'll be able to browse all the classes that are available to us. Of course, when you click on a class, you'll be able to then select the time slot that you want. And once that's selected, you'll be taken to a booking page where you can make an actual booking. That's where I actually purchase it because all of the management of the bookings is going to be done via the Wix website. So Wix provides you with this dashboard where you can see all the bookings that have been made. You can cancel them. You can email the clients. You can do a lot of stuff. Okay, including adding new classes and then new schedules. So this is going to be fully functional. You can deploy it. You can actually use it. And in addition to this, you're going to be using the Mapbox API as well. So if you're interested in learning how to do that, we're going to be covering that too. This project is going to be built in Next.js using the Mapbox API as well as the Wix SDK so that we can manage all the backend stuff thanks to this cool dashboard powered by Wix. Okay, so what are we waiting for? Let's do it. Okay, so let's create a project. I'm going to go ahead and select new project. Uh, this is going to be a Next.js project. So here we go, Next.js. And I'm just going to call this Next.js class pass. Okay, so here is the command we're going to be using. If you aren't using WebStorm, you can just go ahead. I'm going to show you how to do this. Navigate to a directory. So for me, it would be WebStorm projects and use npx create next app here. npx create next app and then whatever you want to call this. So next JS class pass just like that and hit enter. But as we're using WebStorm, I'm not going to do that. I'm simply going to use this. Uh, we can actually do at latest as well, according to the documentation, we probably should. And I'm going to click create. So that is now spinning up my next JS app. Would you like to use TypeScript with this project? No. Would you no? Or should we do yes? Fine, yes. Tailwind, no. Would you like to create a source directory? I think we will. So yes. Do we want to use app router? Yes. Would you like to customize the default import alias? No. And there we go. So that is installing these dependencies for me based on the options that we chose. We're just going to wait for that to do its thing. So let's wait. And done. Okay, so that is now done. And you should see all the files in here in a source directory because we did ask it to do that as well as all this other stuff. So that is pretty cool. I'm just going to go ahead and do a few things. I'm just going to delete the things that we do not want. So I actually don't want the favicon. So I'm going to delete this. The page CSS module. Uh, I think we should actually just keep all our styling in one file, to be honest. So I'm actually going to maybe, should we delete this? I think let's just go ahead and delete this and make our own one. So delete, delete. Anyway, we'll have page, we'll have, we'll get rid of layout actually. So I'm just going to delete layout CSS. Page JS. Okay, so I think. This is essentially going to be our index.js file. Do you know what? In fact, I'm just going to get rid of everything so we can start fresh. So delete. OK. Do refactor and global CSS. I'm just going to delete all of this too. OK, so really going for it with these starting fresh. Great. So now that in our source directory, we have this app file. In fact, I'm just going to move this out. Global CSS, I'm going to put in the source directory and let's delete this app. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete that too. So one item in our source directory is this global CSS file, which has nothing in it. Great. And for those wondering what my package JSON file looks like, those are the dependencies that I have along with their versions. So if something's not working, it could be down to the version that you are using. Just make sure you have the same version as me right here. I'm just going to increase that font size for you a little bit so everyone can see. Wonderful. So let's carry on. 
Okay, so here we have our global CSS. Next, all I'm going to do is actually head over to Wix and sign up for an account. So I'm just going to log in. Uh, I'm just going to continue with Google. So it's just going to ask me to use an email address. I'm just going to use my work one for this and continue to Wix. Okay, so I'm just signing up as if I've never signed up before, really. Uh, and then we're going to carry on. So I'm going to say that I'm building this for myself. Continue. I'm going to put book event and I'm just going to click next because essentially we are wanting to book events, right? And what should we call this? I'm going to call it Anya's class pass and next. Okay, there we go. So great. Let's continue to the dashboard. So this is essentially what our dashboard is going to look like. And on the left, you should be able to see once this loads all the options that we have available to us. So we're going to be using the booking services and the booking calendar for our site. So wonderful. First off, however, we're going to create some classes to essentially go in here. So I'm going to go into booking services and under booking services, I'm going to use one of these. So essentially we're going to create classes. So it's going to be one of these, or we can start from scratch. So I'm going to choose to start from scratch. The service type, well, I'm just going to call each one of these by essentially what the venue is called for the class. So the first one's going to be the platform. Next, I'm just going to give a short tagline. So I'm going to go ahead and put the platform studio DIFC is located in index mall level R1 DIFC. And as a short description, I'm just going to go ahead and put something that I pre-written. The platform studios index tower DIFC is the perfect place for a workout. Come join us and have fun as well as meet like minded people. Let's just make sure that's spelled correctly while doing a fun workout for your entire body. Okay, I think that's good. We can even change the max participants per class. So I'm going to put 20 and then we can also choose one of these. So I'm going to say per session, the fixed price is going to be 200 dirhams and they can pay the entire amount online. That's what I'm going to choose. Of course, there is a drop down if you want them to pay in person or other stuff like that. But I'm going to be very strict and say that I want it to be all paid online so that we can manage it better as a business. Next, I'm just going to choose the business address. So let's go ahead and do it. I'm just going to search for it, add a location, add now. And then I can actually search for the platform studios. There we go. This is going to be optional. I'm just going to use the tagline for this in case we want to use it. So great. Let's save those changes just like that and save it like so. Wonderful. Okay, so there we go. I'm just going to add an image for Platform Studios. So I'm going to choose a main image. I'm simply just going to upload media from my computer. I'm going to pick the one I need. So you can just drag and drop it if you wish. We're going to have like a main image and then a sub main image. So this one looks good. I'm going to add to the page and then also down here, we can add more images if we want. So I can add a cover image too. So for my cover image, let's go ahead and just upload some more media. So once again, this time I'm going to choose a picture of inside platform studios. So just like so that's what I'm doing now and add to page. Great. So we now have two images for this. I'm going to click save. Next, we're going to add a schedule. So that has been saved for us. Okay, here we have one service. We have no sessions, so I can choose to add it from here or I can choose to go in here to where we were before, before I click the save button and I can add sessions here. Okay, so here we go. We already have one recurring session that happens on Thursday at 2 p.m. Let's just pick a staff member. I'm going to rename the first staff member to be Ronnie. Okay. And this is recurring and we click save. So essentially what we are doing is essentially just 
Let's add some more sessions. Adding data to this, so we can use it in our app when we build out the front end. So let's add some more. I'm gonna go with Friday. Let's go 3 p.m. We can add Ronnie or we can have a new staff member. Let's go ahead and add a new one. I'm gonna call the new one Sarah. And there we go. Let's add a few more, just so we have a lot of data to work with. Ronnie can do that one. And let's do another one, maybe on Monday. Let's do it at three. Okay, great. So nice. Now we'll be able to see all the upcoming sessions that are available to book at the platform. So let's go ahead and click save. Okay, wonderful. So this is looking good. We can, of course, come back and change this at any point. If we want to add more, uh, then we can do that from this dashboard. We're also going to be able to manage all the bookings on this calendar, which is quite cool. You'll already see the classes here and you'll be able to see how many participants are here. You can change the participants and also email customers from here. Um, yeah, it's really fully functional to actually be able to, you know, actually run a class pass if you want. So I just wanted to show you that because I think this is a pretty powerful tool. You can see all the uh, classes available as well as how many people have books. Under staff, you will be able to see Ronnie and Sarah that I made. And you can also add images and add their details. Of course, I'm not going to do this now, but you can do that. I'm showing you how to do that here. And you can even give them calendar access if you wish. When I mean this is like next level, it really is. Like it's got so much functionality. It's really crazy. Um, we, of course, have like a work schedule where you can manage Ronnie and Sarah's work schedule and see which classes they're meant to be in charge of, as well as this booking apps. So this is kind of, um, I guess, third party apps that you can connect to this dashboard as well to really get the most out of it, as well as orders uh, and a lot more stuff. So let's just go back here. I'm just going to add one more service so that we have enough data to work with. Let's go ahead and call this. So I'm going to start from scratch again. This time, uh, this is going to be for yoga. So let's call this trans yoga. I'll put a customized fusion of different forms of yoga that will invigorate the seven major chakras or we'll just put chakras because I think we've run out of space. And as the description, I'll put explore the types of classes and different solutions we offer within it. You're about to start the journey to nurture a better you, filled with strength, positivity, and vibrancy. Max class, I'm going to put 10. Let's get an image. So once again, I'm just going to upload some media. I'm going to upload it from my computer. I'm just going to take these two this time. And then I'm going to just pick one and then one for the cover image. So let's choose this one for this image right here. And then let's pick a price. I'm going to put 150 dirham. And then also edit the location. So let's save the service before it lets me edit the location. So that is now saved. Let's go back into it, however. So we'll just wait for that to do its thing. Trans yoga. And then we're going to scroll down once that has loaded. So down here, let's edit this. Let's add a location. And I'm just going to put Onyx Tower because that's where it is in Dubai. Your ready location with the same name, choose another name. Let's put Onyx Tower Dubai, located on the ninth floor. Okay, and add location. So let's save that. And let's also add another image here if we want. So I'm going to add a cover image. It's going to be the second image that I have here. So add to page and let's add some sessions. So let's go here, let's save and continue. And once again, we we'll have, let's have different staff members this time. I'm going to have Gerald. So I'm going to add that. Let's have one on Friday, also reoccurring, maybe at like 9 p.m with Imogen, add new staff, Imogen, add, and then let's have just a few more of these. So just kind of spread out at random times. Great. And let's maybe change these as well. Let's make Gerald take these and save. Okay, cool. 
So this shouldn't be two locations selected. We're just going to have Onyx Tower for this one. Keep the current location. Okay, so those are both Onyx Tower. This is looking great. I'm just going to go back and make sure that the other location uh, has a different name, just so it's not confusing. So the platform here as the location. I'm going to edit this. Let's add a new location, actually. Uh, let's put platform studios. to buy platform studios. Here we go. And then located on the bottom floor. Great. So I think let's just keep it. There's that. If I can only spell it correctly. Once again, platform studios. Flat forum studios Dubai located on the bottom floor. Great. So nice. Let's unselect this one and keep that one and just save that like so. So I think we've got enough data now in order to start populating our app. Let's just use these two and at the end we'll populate it more so that it has like a final finished look with loads of classes, but two is good for now. So great, that is it for now. Let's go ahead and uh, start actually feeding in this data into our app. So let's build out our app. Now we need to do one more thing and that is actually allow for our app to communicate with this Wix website. So let's go to headless settings. We're gonna have to create an OAuth app. So let's just call this class pass auth and I'm going to create it because we're going to be needing this uh, code right here in order to communicate with our app. So save this client ID. I'm just going to put it in my notes for now. And as the URLs, we haven't actually built this out yet, but I'm going to have to allow for a certain redirect URI and we're going to be running our Next.js app on HTTP localhost 3000 and I'm going to create a route called login call bank. So make sure to add that and make sure when it comes to uh, creating the pages that you call yours exactly the same as mine. Otherwise, this will not work. And then if you already have a domain in mind, then please go ahead and add that here. So for example, say you were just um, going to launch it on whatever website Wix gave you. So for example, mine is this. Just make sure to add the redirect as well. Okay. So that is something you're going to have to do. Otherwise you might get some funky messages or not found pages. Uh, if you try visit the login callback page on your app. So that's all you have to do. Please go ahead and hit save and we should now be ready to go. Great. Okay, so that is now saved. It's the same as your Wix domain here at the moment, just with a different endpoint added instead. And then if you need to edit it again, just go here and it should be there. Great. Cool. So let's go back to our apps. So before we forget about that client ID, I'm just going to create a .env file on the root of our project. So go ahead and call it .env. Because in here, I want you to essentially save that client ID. So I'm going to go next public. Uh, and let's call this Wix client ID. And then just go ahead and paste that ID, that client ID that we saved from the OAuth app. So if you need a reminder, it's this one, right? Just paste that in here. And then we're also going to need the Mapbox uh, token. But for now, I think it's fine. Of course, let's leave Mapbox to the very end. So cool. Let's get the page structure right next. So in fact, I know I keep changing my mind, but let's not have a source directory. What I'm going to do is create another directory called pages. 
just like that. And I'm going to move the global CSS out of here and then create a styles directory. So once again, I'm going to create a new directory called styles. And I'm just going to move global CSS into here. Let's delete the source directory. So this is what um, your file structure should look like at the moment. And then I'm also going to create a components directory. So let's create one more new directory called components. So just like so. This just means that on here, I'm just going to delete that source just like that and save this file. Okay, so we got rid of the source directory. Just make sure that is removed from that too. Wonderful. Let's carry on. Next, I'm going to actually create some pages. So let's go ahead and start with the actual app itself. So let's create a new file and I'm going to call it app.js, just like so. And then here I'm going to define the actual app. That's right. Make it a little bit bigger for you. I'm going to make this smaller. And then we're going to do export default app. OK, and here's going to be the app It's actually going to hold all our components, all our pages and a header that is visible on all the pages, no matter which page we go to. So next, I'm going to import some stuff. So I'm going to import head from next head, import link from next link. And that is it. And import the styles, right? So import at styles from the global CSS file, which at the moment has nothing in it. And now, like I said, this app, well, we're going to use it to display all the pages, right? So this is how you would do it. We're going to pass through these two things. And now I'm just going to return just a wrapping element, making sure that is not curly braces. So there we go. And we're going to get that component. I'm going to pass through the page props. So that will allow us to essentially see all the pages in our app. And if we want a header to show up, I'm going to create a header just like so. I'm creating it in here. I'm not going to make a new component out of it because honestly, this is not going to hold much. Um, here is our header and it's going to hold a link that is going to essentially wrap a H3 element for now that just says class pass. OK, and if we click on this, it's just going to take us back to the home page. So that's how you would do that. Cool. Uh, I'm also going to actually add uh, a head to pass through some metadata. So for example, what we want to call our site, let's call it class pass. Let's call it Anya's class pass. So this will show up in the browser tag as remember, this is metadata. You can also have a meta tag that is for mobile view, even though we're not going to be doing it for mobile view for this tutorial. That is simply just, you know, too much to cover. But of course, if you want to then later do it for mobile view, that will be useful. And next, I'm also going to, well, we're not going to have a favicon. So I'm just going to leave that for now. Great. But if you wanted a favicon, that was the piece of code that you would use. So maybe let's make this a little bit smaller. So we've got our head that will hold our metadata. We've got a header that will simply for now link a uh, H3 element to the home page if we click on it. And I'm also going to have a login bar here. So this is a component. Uh, let's go ahead and create it next. So in our components, I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call this. Well, let's call it. I think we should call it login bar, login bar.js. Okay, and once again, const login bar equals, here is the syntax for making a component. This should hopefully be familiar to you. Uh, and then we're going to do export default login bar. And for now, I'm just going to return the word 
Again, this should be in parentheses, so return. I'm gonna do an wrapping element, and for now, I'm just gonna put login bar. So the word login bar, because I wanna show you what this looks like. So cool, I think it's time for us to spin this up. I'm just gonna make this a bit smaller so you can kind of see everything that is going on. So that is my whole app at the moment. Uh, let's spin this up. So here you will be able to see that we use the command dev. So what I'm gonna do is just, well, we can do it in here. So let's get up our terminal. Just make sure you're in the project next year's class pass or not somewhere else and do npm run dev. And that's it. And I should spin it up on localhost 3000. So here we go. Okay, and there we go. We get class pass here showing up because we created a header and if we inspect this we should be able to see uh, the tools that are provided to us and we're, we're not displaying any page here because we haven't actually created any pages but this is the header as you can see here it's an h3 element ranch and a link and if we click on it it takes us back to localhost 3000 um even though that did show me an error why is that let's go back ah it's because we don't actually have an index page yet so there's nothing to go back to so let's create that page first so like i said let's go into pages and create our first page so i'm going to create a file called index.js so just like that and this is going to be essentially the home page so what we see when we visit localhost 3000 or your domain url without a slash and then a page afterwards cool before we move on though i just want to show you another way to put in that head uh, I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call it document.js. And in here, once again, I'm going to export document. So const document equals export default document. And this time I'm going to put a few things from next. So import HTML head main and next script from next document and this time i'm just going to return uh, and put out the full kind of uh, html document information that we need for the meta information so language english um, and then let's have a closing HTML tag. And in here, I'm actually just going to grab the head from here. So we don't actually need it in here anymore. I think it's just gonna make it a little bit more readable for us and kind of keep all this kind of stuff separate. So here we have the head and then we're gonna have the body of the HTML document. And we're gonna have the main element that we've imported and then also the next script. So essentially all the stuff that we need or essentially all the stuff that in, is in here is gonna be fed through here, okay? So I think that just makes it a little bit neater to keep everything kind of separate. And it just means that our app.js file just is a bit shorter now and it just has all the kind of um, elements that are visual in here. Great, so I'm just going to Get rid of that document for now. Let's just check that still works. Anya's class boss is showing in here, so it is being picked up. This is looking good. Let's go back. Okay, let's build out our first actual page. So the home page. I'm actually gonna call this home. So please feel free to call it whatever you want. So let's create another component. I'm just gonna make it a bit bigger export default home just make sure that the syntax for that is correct great so what do we want for here well again this is just going to be very visual actually i'm just going to be creating a page that essentially has a, a kind of image and then holds all the information for us about class pass so i'm going to create a div i'm going to give this the class name of main and in here, I'm going to create an article. Let's give this the class name of, I'm just going to close that article. Uh, this is going to be for the information. So I'm going to go main info container and close that off. So make sure that is a closing tag that matches that one. Let's minimize this for now. 
So once again, this is on the index.js page that we are working on. So let's get rid of these. And in my main info container, I'm going to have an H1 element. It's going to say one app for all the fitness, wellness, and beauty. So I've already prepared this. Then we're going to have a P element. That's again going to just, I'm just taking this from the class pass site, right? Because we are making a clone. So this is going to have all of this text. So in between two paragraph uh, tags, which make up an element. Next, I'm going to have a button. So I'm going to create a div and this is indeed going to be button container. I wonder how it knew that. That is pretty creepy. Class name, button container, right? Because this is going to hold a button. So I'm going to have two buttons in here, actually. I'll have one. Thanks, tab nine, for all the suggestions. We're going to have one button, another button. And this button is going to say try for free. So try for free. And this button is going to say tell me more about class pass okay and we're going to give this the styling of a primary button so this is going to be kind of a global styling that i'm going to apply primary and this is going to be secondary so class name secondary for the button another thing i'm going to do so maybe let's also just space these out a little bit so it's a little bit more readable is give this one um an on click on click what do i want to happen uh well i want to essentially log in so we're going to write a function to log in if this is clicked So essentially we're going to define log in and do the same for if we actually click on this one. So they're both going to take us to log in. Okay, great. Nearly done. We just have uh, a few more things to do. I'm actually just going to comment this out because of course we haven't written that function at all. So after our buttons, after actually the whole button container, right? So just down here, I'm then going to add a link. And this link is going to take us to browse classes and appointments. And if we click on it, it's going to take us to a page, which is going to be a search page, which we are yet to write. But of course, we need to import this link uh, from Next.js. So I can actually just go ahead and do that and it will import link from Next.js for me up here. So we already have one link, just make sure that is spelled correctly. And next, I'm just going to have one more paragraph element. Um, it's going to actually be a disclaimer. So again, I'm just taking this from the actual website itself. It says offer is available to new trialers only. Spa and salon appointments are available after trial. And I'm going to style this up a bit different. I'm going to put disclaimer just so we can style that P element a little bit differently. So that is now our index.js page. As you will see, it's all showing up here. How cool is that? We've done the HTML. Now let's get to styling it up. So great. That is all on the index.js page, right? Because we essentially have put it in pages and it's being fed into here right here. So this header will be, like I said, visible no matter how many pages we put in here. Cool. Let's get to styling this up next. So let's get our global CSS file and let's do it. So first off, I'm just going to leave the whole document. So everything in here, the same font family. Uh, again, this is just the one that I found is kind of the closest, but please feel free to you know, just use whichever one you wish, especially for when you are perhaps doing this, you know, not to copy class pass, but to build your own booking app. Next to the HTML and body, I'm going to apply these two things, apart from I'm going to spell body correctly. So just to kind of start fresh with the margin and padding, um, I'm also going to not allow uh, any scrolling so to the bottom so overload x is going to be hidden and the max width i'm going to put as a hundred viewport width okay great 
Now let's actually start the header. So the thing that's going to hold the class bar's word as well as the login bar. I want to essentially make sure that everything is aligned from left to right. So I'm going to initialize Flexbox. I'm also going to give it a border bottom of one pixel solid. And we do RGB. Uh, this is a gray that I picked out earlier, just a very light gray. So as you will see here, that line has now been applied to the header because that is the whole header. Uh, and let's carry on. The next thing I'm going to do is just make sure that everything is spaced out evenly. And for this, I'm going to do justify content after putting in a semicolon here. Justify content space between. So now everything I put in is going to have the same spacing in between each one. And next, I want it to be stuck to the top. So I'm going to do position fixed, um, top zero pixels. OK, we actually don't need to use the pixel. We could just put zero. Let's also make sure that the background is white so that, you know, if stuff's behind it while we are moving around, uh, that it'll always be white. So, you know, if we want to put a map behind it, that will uh, essentially cover the map if the map is placed behind it with the Z index. Next, I also want to make sure it's always 100 of the viewport width. And let's also give it a box shadow. So the box shadow I have is 0, X axis, 12 pixels, Y axis, 24 pixels, blur. And then I'm going to make it transparent, black with 0 0.06. So at the moment, it looks like this. Kind of cool. I'm really into it. OK, and now what I'm going to do is also make sure that it's always on top, which is why I'm going to give a Z index of three. OK, cool. Now let's style a button if it has a primary class. So I'm going to grab any button, any button at all. And if it has, so the class, so that's what that means, it has this element of button has the class of primary. That's all like stuck together. Well, then the background color. I'm going to have a blue. So this is stolen from the class pass website. This is the blue they use. Let's also get rid of the border. So I'm going to go none. Uh, let's also make sure that the font is white. So RGB 255, 255, 255. Padding is going to be 10 pixels. Uh, let's actually make it 10 pixels on top and bottom and 20 pixels on the left and right and let's round it off so i'm going to put border radius uh, let's go with 30 pixels to make it look more like a pill so that's what it looks like let's do the secondary styling next which is essentially very similar to the primary just i'm going to switch a few things around so i'm just going to copy that and put secondary just like so and this time instead of a background color i'm going to put the border as this color, we're going to put one pixel solid as well. Uh, so it means that we don't have this border here anymore. And the color of the text is going to be the same. It's going to be blue. And yeah, I think we're OK with that. Let's also add a font size. So we could have just styled a button and um, essentially reuse some of these but you know i've done it this way now so i'm just going to go ahead and add it there too cool so there we have our buttons maybe let's also let's actually give this a background color of white so background color rgb 255 255 255 and wonderful so that is looking good i'm happy with that so far let's move on the other thing that we need to do, so let's go ahead and pick out the main info container, or maybe just main anything, right? So in fact, those are all kind of reusable. Uh, let's put main page now because that's this is specific to the main page, whereas these buttons can be used anywhere. So first off, I'm just going to pick out the wrapping element. So the wrapping element is this div with a class of main. And what I'm going to do is actually uh, just assign a height of 100 viewport height. 
I'm also going to make sure that anything in it, so the initialize flexbox is in the center. So justify content center and align items center. And this would not work without the height, which is why I added that. I'm also actually going to add an image. So background. Um, yeah, let's go with image. And this is going to take a URL and I'm simply just going to steal it from class pass. So there we go. Everything is centered. And if I visit class pass, what I want to do is just take this image, which is hosted online. So this one right here. So I'm going to inspect this. Of course, this is, you know, if you don't want to use your own, right? Like, please replace this with your own if you uh, want to. So I'm just going to find where it is background image. So here's a URL. I believe it's this one. Let's check it out. Okay, that's a small one. Let's try this one. Okay, and this one is the one that we want. So I'm just going to literally take that URL and put it in my own site. So da da da. Just pasted it in like so. Make sure that is closed off. And make sure to put HTTPS. And now there it is. Okay, so there it is. It is showing. Let's also maybe now style the main info container. So let's grab that. And let's give this a background color of white. Background color RGB 255, 255, 255. So that it looks like that. And we can style it up further. Okay, so let's do it. Next off, I'm just gonna add a border radius to round it off. So border radius, 30 pixels. And now I'm going to also add some padding. So the padding is going to be 60 pixels, so quite a lot to essentially pad out the text from the actual container itself. Great. I'm also going to hard code the width. So I'm going to make sure that the width is 100, 450 pixels, as I think that will look good. And then I'm also going to do text align center. Cool. So that's what it should look like. Let's also style it up a little bit more. I'm going to say that any H1 elements that live inside the main info container, so any H1 element that lives inside of it, I'm going to say that I want the font size of this to be 40 pixels, and I'm going to get rid of any margin and padding. So actually, I believe that's, yeah, let's get rid of it. So margin zero padding zero so that's what it should look like and let's also now style the disclaimer so again what i'm going to do is just make sure that the element lives inside the main info container and it has the class of disclaimer right so make sure to spell it exactly the same as you have here disclaimer uh, and I'm going to change the font size to be, let's go with 12 pixels, and I'm just going to make it gray. So the color of the text is going to be RGB 126, 126, 126. So that's what it should look like at the moment. Cool. I'm also going to start the button container, so the container that holds these two buttons. So again, just make sure that button container is inside this one. So button container. And what I want the button container to do is what well, I'm going to use display flex. I'm going to make sure that the two things are on top of each other. So I'm going to go flex direction column and I'm actually going to add some margin to the bottom. So margin bottom 20 pixels. OK, so already it's looking a lot better. Now let's actually also add just a little bit of styling to space out the buttons. So any button that lives inside the button container, inside the main info container, I'm just gonna give it a margin of five pixels. Okay, and great. 
So there we go. I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller for you so you can see because I'm viewing this on a smaller screen than you and wonderful. So for now, I'm happy with that. This is looking good. I think let's start the search page next. So the page here, which we have not created yet, let's go ahead and create it. So let's do it. Let's get rid of the global CSS. And I think we're now good for the index.js page. I think we've got everything done. We'll come back to these on clicks later and let's create a search page. So in the pages directory, all I'm going to do is create a new file literally called search.js. Okay, so we're creating the search page. Great. And how do we want to define this? I think let's just go with const search. So const search equals, and let's make a component. And then export default search. So at the moment, it will just return an h1 heading that says search. And that will be done. There it is. It's behind the header as we fix that header. But there it is. So that is on the search page for slash search now it goes to search.js, which lives inside the pages directory. Pretty cool, right? So let's actually first, I think, get the data back to us from Wix. So this is going to be a fun way to learn how to use the SDK. Let's do it. OK, so up here, first off, I'm going to have to import a few things. So let's go ahead and import. I'm going to import use effect, use state from react, uh, also use context. We're going to be using that. Uh, I'm also going to import link from next link. I'm also going to import a few things from Wix. So let's get up our terminals. I'm just going to create a new tab. Make sure you're in that project. I'm going to install a few packages. I'm actually going to install the Wix APA client. So it looks like this. I'm also going to install Wix bookings, which looks like this. I'm also going to install JS cookies so we can store cookies. And I think that is it for now. I'm just going to press enter and wait for those three things to install. OK, great. So while that's doing its thing, that should populate in here. I'm also going to create some middleware. So this is just from the Wix documentation, right? Middleware JS. So as you can see, those things have now been uh, installed with these versions. Make sure your versions are the same if something is not working and you're using this in the future. Just revert back to these. And now the middleware. Well, from API client from Wix, I'm going to import create client. And I'm also going to import O, capital O, auth strategy from Wix API client. So import those two things. And we're also going to import next response from next server. OK, cool. Now we're going to export essentially async function middleware. However, we can rewrite this to be a function expression later. I just want to get this done. So we're essentially going to generate a session for the visitor if no session exists, as in like, you know, you're not logged in. So if request cookies get and we're going to look in the cookies and get session. So if none of that exists in our cookies, we know we are not logged in. Then I'm going to response new next. Get a next response. And I'm going to generate that cookie. So we're going to use my Wix client. So I'm going to define it. And I'm going to get create client and let's create that client. So I'm going to get auth and I'm going to pass through. Let's get the O auth strategy. And then I'm going to pass through my client ID, which essentially is going to be in the ENV file. 
So this thing right here, next public Wix client is what I should be using here. And now I'm going to get the response, get the cookie and set session, right? Because none existed before. And now we have it. I'm going to use JSON stringify await oh, my client await oh, my Wix client dot auth dot generate visitors tokens. Okay, so just make sure that's a comma there. We're essentially setting a cookie under session and then storing the generated token with it. And then I'm just going to return the response. Not sure why that imported. So let's get rid of it. And this is what the whole file should look like. Great, we will clean this up later on. Uh, whoops, that should just be just make sure that is request. So that's our middleware JS file. Let's shut that down. Let's shut down the package JSON. Shut down the .env. And let's work on the search page. Okay, so let's carry on importing. I'm going to import, once again, create client and also auth strategy from Wix API client. I'm also going to import services as that's what we need to get. Services are essentially uh, the thing that we are searching for, right? Because here under booking services, these are my services, right? These classes are my services. So that's what I'm getting import services from at Wix bookings. I'm also going to import cookies from JS cookie because we're going to need to grab those cookies, you know, from that we are saving. So the tokens that we just looked at, I'm going to import card from and we're going to create a card that we're going to loop over. So actually we will maybe just leave that out for now. Uh, and then we're going to also import a map, which we have not done yet. So for now, let's just work with this. So to get those services, again, I'm going to just define my Wix client. I'm going to create a client and I'm going to pass through modules. What I want to get back is the services, right? So that's what I need. And as the auth, I'm going to use capital O, o auth strategy. And then I'm going to pass through the client ID, which is Let's get rid of that process.env next public Wix client ID and then the tokens. So I'm going to essentially check if I am logged in or not, so if there's a session. So I'm going to use JSON parse. I'm going to use cookies get session as that's what I saved it at in my cookies or if none exists, just null. Okay, great. So we can either be logged in or not logged in. Cool. So that is essentially us um, communicating with our Wix dashboard. Now let's fetch those services. So in here, what I'm going to do is save them to state. So const service list set service list use state. It's going to be an empty array to start with. And let's fetch services. Okay, so this is going to be an async function. And all I'm going to do is essentially const service list await my Wix client services. And then I'm going to do query services. This is all from the Wix documentation find and call it. Okay, so that's all I'm going to do. And then I'm going to use set service list and pass through the service list items. So now in my use effect, I'm going to, that's right, fetch services. And that just means that here, if I console log the service list, so up here, let's see what we save to state. So right in here, ta-da, you will see my service list. You'll see two objects. Okay, this one is the platform, 
And the second one is for trans yoga. So we're getting the information. We're essentially getting these two services showing up here. We're getting all that data so we can now use it and let's use it to map onto little cards next. So let's do it. I'm going to create a card. So let's go back in here. And in components, I'm going to create new file. This is going to be a card.js. And let's define it. So const card equals. And do export default card return. So in the card, we're going to make it from the article element. The article element, I'm going to give the class name of card because that's how we're going to pick it out because we have multiple articles in here. Let's create one div and this div is going to hold the info. So I'm going to give it the class name of info container, just like so. And then in here, I'm going to have another div. This one's going to be for the image container, which is why I'm going to have an image here. So let's give this the class name of image container. And this image well, it's going to take a source, which I'm going to leave blank for now, and also some alternative text for the visually impaired. Cool. So that is one thing. The next thing I'm going to have in my info container is a text container. Sure, why not? Thank you, tab nine. So that is going to go here, and I'm going to use an H3 element to show the service name, and then a P element here to also show the service tagline. So the tagline is the kind of secondary thing that we had with the service. Now, outside of this info container, so where this finishes right here, I'm going to have another div. And this is just going to have a P element, and it's just going to hold the description. So I'm just going to put description for now, and let's give this the class name of description container. Cool. So that is my card. Uh, shall we feed stuff into here? I think we can if we want. Or for now, I'm just going to actually comment it out. So let's go ahead. This is going to be for the name of the service. This is going to be for the tagline. This is going to be for the descriptions. So there we go. And I think that's all we're going to be feeding in here for now. So let's now import the card, import card from components card, and I'm going to map it out. So I'm going to, so instead of maybe having this H1 element, I'm going to have an H2 element, as this is not the most important thing on here. Uh, I'm going to say choose class, right? Because we want to choose a class. And this is actually going to, I'm just going to get rid of that for now. The wrapping element for this is going to be the search container. And in the search container, we're going to have a results container. So let's create a div class name results container. And in the results container, I'm going to have choose your class. And then I'm going to have an unordered list. And now I'm going to use the link. Let's get a closing link. And I'm going to just simply wrap each of these in a, or actually maybe let's see, yeah, it needs to be in the list item. So each list item is going to have a link inside of it, which is actually going to wrap over our card element that we just made and imported. So that is, of course, what our unordered list is going to look like. However, we want to map the service list onto each list item. So let's get the service list. And I'm going to use map to map each service onto, that's right, this list item right here. So just like that. So now I can get each service. In fact, we don't really need this. I can get each service and I could just pass it through into the card. So I'm going to get the service, pass it through into the card, which means here we need to destructure it. And I'm just going to console log it out for now. 
So console log each service. Okay, cool. Now, this we will do eventually. We're going to use it from the service main slug name. Uh, I also want to actually, let's, yeah, let's give this a class name. And I'm going to give it the class name of card link, just like so. And then after the unordered list, I'm actually going to, so actually after the results container, make another div. And this is going to be for the map. Or we can just put in the map here. So I'm going to just put in the whole map element. We don't have it yet, so I'm just going to comment it out. Cool. And we are done. So there we go. At the moment, we have two service lists. That's why it's mapping out onto two things. However, so here's the first one. Here's the second one. Let's actually use this, right? Because this is what's being, this whole object is being what's console logged out here. And I'm going to use that information in order to pass through certain things, right? So the name of this is the, oops, maybe let's comment that out again. We're going to the service and get the name. So we're going to use dot notation. So I'm going to go into the service that we are passing through into here, right? It's been console logged out and get the name of that service, which means this has the platform and this has trans yoga. Next, let's get the, what else can we use? That'll be fun, the tagline, right? So I'm going to go ahead and get that. Here is the tagline. So once again, let's get the service object and get its tagline. So there we go. What else can we get? Well, let's get the image. So the image is in media, I believe. We, we can get the cover image on the main image. I think we should get the main image and then we're gonna get the image. So a lot of dot notation going on here, but also we're gonna to have to import something uh, from Wix. So we're gonna import something in the Wix API client. Do we have that one? Yes, we have the API client, that's good. So let's import it in here so we can work with images from Wix. So import media is what we're gonna to have to get from at Wix API client. And now I'm gonna to have to, let's define image. I'm going to have to get media that we just supported up there. I'm gonna use get image URL and now I'm gonna pass through that URL. So I'm gonna get the service and then I'm gonna, what is it? Service.media dot main image dot image. So let's do it. Service media dot cover image dot image. You can use the cover image or you can use the main image. It is up to you. And once we have that, I'm just gonna uncomment this out, get that image, right? and get its URL, right? Because, oh, whoops. What is happening here? This doesn't need to be, let's also pass through some text and so maybe just use the service name for this. And great. So once again, we're going into media, we're getting the cover image, getting the image, and then getting its URL from that. Once we pass it through into get image URL, the method that comes with media that we've imported from up here. Wonderful. So this is looking good. We're getting images, we're getting text showing up. Let's actually style these cards up next. So let's do it. So I believe we are done with everything in here now. Ah, let's also get the service description. So I'm gonna get the service and get the description from it as that exists on the object. If you go in here, da, 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 da. description is there. So that's showing up now too. And now let's start everything up. So maybe I'm just gonna format this before shutting this down, but let's code. Format code, wonderful. And now let's get the global CSS and let's start everything to do with the card component. So the card component, well, of course, 
we need to actually style the card itself. So I'm going to go dot card. I'm going to use display flex to initialize flex box and make sure everything goes from left to right. I'm going to add a border on the bottom only and it's going to be solid. It's going to be one pixel. And it's going to be RGB 214214214. Let's give it a padding of 10 pixels all around. So at the moment, I mean, it won't look like much. Let's carry on styling. Once again, I'm going to get the card and say any P element that lives inside of it. I'm going to give it the font size of 13, just to make it that little bit smaller, so 13 pixels. Uh, let's maybe also get the actual image itself. So I'm actually going to say that any image container, making sure to spell it exactly the same as here, that lives inside the card element with the class of card. I'm just going to say that I'm going to hard code the height of it to be 100 pixels and the width of it to be 150 pixels. OK, let's also round it off a bit. So I'm going to use border radius five pixels on it and I'm going to hide everything that's overflowing, overflowing that 100 and 150. Uh, I'm also going to give it a margin of 10 pixels all around. Just make sure that is a class name as well. So that should do that. Of course, it's just cutting off our image, right? Which means that the image that lives inside of it, so this element right here, I'm also going to change. So I'm going to say that any image that lives inside that particular image container that lives inside an element with a class of card, I'm just going to make sure that the height of it is 130%. So it's kind of a bit larger behind the scenes, but just to make sure that there's no weird funky behavior happening. If it's a square image and so on, that's what I have done. Wonderful. So this is looking pretty good. Let's carry on. The next thing I'm actually going to do is just uh, perhaps get rid of any kind of um, link looking stuff. So I'm going to get the card link. So the element I gave the class of card link to and give it text decoration none. And I'm also going to change the color of the font to be RGB 242424. Okay, cool. So that is looking much better. There is a bunch more things to do, however. So this time, I think I want to also uh, get the description container. So this right here and the text container and just make sure that they are the same width. So I'm going to just make sure that the text container that lives inside. So text container that lives inside the element of the class of card, as well as the description container. So I'm going to give them both the same styling. Um, I'm going to make sure that they both have a width of 200 pixels and a margin of 10 pixels. OK, so that's already looking a lot better. Next, let's grab the info container. So let's grab the info container. And the info container, uh, I just want to make sure that everything's also from left to right. So the info container holds the image and the text container. I'm going to actually give it a width of 400 pixels and a border right at this time. So a border right, I'm going to make it solid one pixel and then RGB. This is a gray that I picked out. I believe I've used it somewhere else already. But it just means that this will look like that. Wonderful. I think this is looking so much better already. Let's just get rid of this uh, list item. I'm actually going to make this generic because I don't want any list items to have this, I'm going to go any list item. It's going to have a list style type, none. So that's got rid of that dot. Great. This is looking cool. Of course, we click on it, it will, it will just go back to the home page because we haven't defined a route for this to go to. But I love this so far. Let's actually work on the search bar next so that we can filter these out. OK, I'm going to be filtering based on a query thanks to Wix. So let's do it. Before we move on, however, I'm just going to actually get rid of any margin from the H3 element that lives inside the card, as well as any uh, margin that the P elements have. So I'm just going to go with margin zero and let's move on. OK, so we are now done with the card. Let's get rid of that console log. This is what everything in here looks like. I'm just going to make it a tiny bit 
uh, smaller for you so you can see everything right here. Okay, and let's carry on. So we've got the card, let's do the search next. So essentially the search bar. So all I'm gonna do is create a new component. I'm gonna create a new file. I'm gonna call this search bar .js and let's define it. So const search bar equals, that's right. I'm gonna get the syntax up for a search bar and let's return a div for now. In fact, I'm just gonna make it an empty wrapping element. And I'm gonna do export default search bar. So the search bar, let's actually create it, right? So what I'm going to do is um, create a, in fact, we can make this a div. Sorry, I'm being so indecisive. I'm gonna give this the class name of item container as this is going to be technically an item in the nav bar which is why i'm going to do that and that's going to be reusable and now i'm going to create a div and this div is going to be the actual search bar so i'm going to give this the class name of search bar container okay and let's create that search bar so it's going to be an input uh, and this input, well, it's going to have a few things. My input is first off, let's give this the class name of search input. The placeholder I'm going to give it is yoga, pilates, massage. And on a change, I'm going to set the search term, but the search term I actually want to be uh, global, which is why we're going to use context for this. Um, so e set search term e target value, and then I'm just going to place the value as the eventual search term. Okay, so a quick crash course in use context here. Hopefully you have used it. Uh, let's actually set, save it up here. So search term, set search term, use state. Apart from instead of use state, we're going to use context as we're going to be doing this from the constant context of the app. So we're going to save this as search context and let's actually import use context as well. So import use context from React. And we're also going to import port search context import search context from and I'm going to store it so we're going to go back out of here we're going to go into pages and we're going to go into app make sure that says pages and in app what I'm going to do I'm going to make this a little bit bigger for you uh, well, let's get create context, right? Because here's where we're going to be creating that context that we're going to use everywhere else. So create context, use state from React. And now I'm going to define search context that we imported into here, right? So we're going to have to export it as well. Export const so we can use it in here. And let's define it. So I'm going to create context and I actually want the context to be null because I want to change the context from the search bar. So that's what I've done. I've exported it and I've imported it in here so we can use it here and we can therefore use it here and change it here too. So that's how that is all linked. And the next thing I need to do is just um, use this search context and wrap the whole app in it so they can use that context anywhere in the app. So let's do it. I'm going to use search context provider and the value I'm going to pass through is essentially this. Okay, so there we go. If this was really rushed, please do check out my uh, full stack developer course where I go into this in a lot more detail. Of course, I'm assuming you have the knowledge of how to use context already, but I could not be accurate in thinking that. Cool. And just, yeah close that off. So that is wrapped. Just going to reformat this a little bit better. And here is the whole code for that. Amazing. The last thing we need to do is just save that up here as well. So yeah, that's right. 
Use state and use state starting off with being null. Okay. So now we should be able to use the search term anywhere in the app. I'm just going to console log that search term is working. Of course, we need to actually import this search bar somewhere. So we're exporting it. Let's import it in here from component search bar. And I'm actually going to put it here, right? So in the header, is the second item in the header because this is the first one. This is the second item. Okay, so there it is. And now if I search for something, let's go to our console log. I'm going to say SSS. The search term is indeed SSS. So that is looking good. Uh, each child in a list should have a unique key. Okay, so we also need to go back to the search. And let's give each one of these a key. So that is fine. Key. I'm just going to go with service ID, as I believe that exists on the service, and they do have an ID. So that gets rid of that error. And also, I'm going to use the slug so that we can now go to each one of these items too, so just while we are here. So let's go ahead and maybe go to forward slash services. I'm going to use backticks for this, as we are going to have to put code in here because we're going to be looking for the slug. So backtick forward slash services, and then I'm going to use the dollar sign so we can put in some code. Let's make this a little bit bigger for you so you can perhaps see. And I'm going to use encode URI component and pass through the service dot main slug dot name. Okay, because I'm just simply going into here, getting the service, getting the main slug name, right? So if we save that now, so that is on the link itself. If I click on here, it goes to services and then the slug name. Of course, we don't have a page for that yet, but pretty cool that it's going to that unique slug, right? Amazing. So cool, the search bar is working, the clicks are working. I think let's carry on working on the search bar though because we want to be able to filter out and I want to style it up too. So let's style it up a bit first. This should say value as well. Make sure that says value and ca let's carry on. One other thing I'm actually going to do is import and I'm going to import a search icon. Uh, and this is a component I'm going to make. So let's create a new file. I'm going to call it search icon.js const search icon equals then export default search icon. And I'm simply just going to return an SVG that I found on the internet. So here it is. Please feel free to take my code for this. I'm just going to show you where I found this. So here is one. You can copy the path for it here. Okay. And simply just paste it in like I have right here. So that is the search icon. That's all I've done. Um, yeah, the code will be available to you in the description. And now I've imported it. So import from search icon. And I'm just going to put it right here. So of course, at the moment, uh, it just looks like here. Let's style all of this up and change its positioning too. So let's get rid of that now. Let's get the app.js file. Let's keep the search. Let's get the global CSS up. And let's work on the search bar. OK, great. Okay, so first off, maybe let's grab the search input itself. So let's grab that. I'm going to give it a position of absolute. And actually, it lives in the search bar container. And I want this to be its parent, so I'm going to give this the position of relative so that it sticks to the search bar container. OK, so at the moment, it's over there somewhere. Uh, let's maybe add another item in here. So in the. Uh, 
header, so where's the app, so that these things are spaced out evenly with the third item being in here. And that third item is essentially going to be the login bar. So I'm going to create a login bar, which actually we already have created, right? We've just got some text. So cool. That should space all these three things out equally now. Wonderful. And we can just see the search bar a little bit better. So given that the position of a relative, so that search input is now positioned according to the search bar container. Next, I'm also just going to give this a, well, actually, maybe, yeah, let's define the width of the parent width. I'm going to go with 400 pixels, height 40 pixels, and then I'm going to give it a margin right of 400 pixels as well. And then the search button itself, I'm going to give it a width of 100% so it fills the parent. I'm going to give it a padding of 10 pixels on the top and bottom and 30 pixels on the left and right. Let's round it off. So I'm going to do border radius 20 pixels. Outline, I'm going to say none. Border, I want to give it a solid border of maybe not this, maybe 219, 219, 219. And finally, I'm just going to give a box shadow of 0x axis, 12y axis, 24 pixels blur. And the color for this is going to be RGBA 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.06. Okay, so that's what it looks like at the moment. Next, I'm going to also position this. And also, you know, I don't know why it's like all the way up there. It's in an item container, which I think we will use. Now let's get the SVG that lives inside the search bar. So I'm going to look for that SVG, so the search icon. And again, I'm going to give it a position of absolute. This time, however, I'm going to give it the Z index of one so that it goes here. And now I'm going to position it from the top and from the left. So all I'm going to do is go top 10 pixels, left 10 pixels. And there we go. There it is. This is looking great. Cool. Now I think we should perhaps style the item container. So the item container, I'm just going to stick that here. And the item container, what do I want that to be like? Well, I just want to initialize Flexbox and then I'm just going to align items. So from top to bottom center, okay. So there they look like this. So that one right here, I'm going to wrap this in an item container and this in an item container too. And finally, I think let's just give it a margin. So I'm going to give it a margin zero from the top and bottom and 10 pixels from the left and right. Okay, great. So I'm loving how this is looking now. Let's hook up the search bar next. So back on the search page is where we're going to do this logic. I'm just going to minimize that. Let's import search context from pages app. So once again, we're just importing the context here and now let's get it. So we're going to get this. Uh, let's go ahead and do that down here. So const search term search, set search term. We're going to use context and the context that we're going to use is search context. So that's all I'm doing so that we're able to get the search term in this file or in this component or in this page <laughs> to be more precise. Okay, so there we have it. So now the search term can be used in the search component. And I'm going to say that if a search term exists, well, then we're going to want to search, find the service list, but also based on a query. So I think what we should do is use, if the search term exists, we're going to do something else. So if the search term exists, we're going to do that. And if it doesn't, we're just going to find all the services. However, if it does exist, we're going to do query services starts with, and then we're going to look for the services by the name, and then we're going to decode URI component. 
And we're going to pass through the search term and then we're going to find. Okay, so that is a long one. This should be starts with. And then once we have it, so we can't define the const here twice. So I'm just going to set it up here, but as nothing and then assign either that or that to it. And then I'm going to just set these services. So this just means that we're going to fetch the services each time the search term changes as well. So add that as a dependency to the use effect. And now I can search. So how cool is that? Amazing. We have linked up the search bar. Let's move on. Okay, so next I want to actually handle what we see when we visit one of these pages. So let's do that next. So let's just get rid of some of these again. And now in pages, I'm going to create a services directory. Make sure to name it services as this is the path we're creating services and then the slug. So to create the slug, all I'm going to do is create a new file and then I'm going to use square brackets, write slug because that's what's going to be replaced, JS. So there we go. Now in the slug, essentially it's going to be the service page, right? So I want to show the service page. So just like that, and we're going to do export default service page. Once again, we're going to have to import a bunch of stuff into here. This time I'm going to import use router from next router. So next router. I'm also going to import use effects from Yacht as well as use state. So let's get those two things in there. Uh, let's also import create client and O auth strategy from Wix API client. I'm going to import the availability calendar from Wix redirect so actually we need to actually import this as well because we don't have this as a dependency so let's get up our terminal npm i wix redirects so that will do its thing but we've got the availability calendar we also need to get these services so this is all going to be for um, getting the right information from our wix client i'm also going to import cookies so import cookies from JS cookie and I'll show you how these cookies work in a bit import and then I think we are also well we're gonna have to create a few things I'm gonna create like a mini card as well to actually show all the um, slots that are available for the service but let's get to building out the service page first so let's get the data in right so I'm going to define this as fetch service singular this time as we're going to be fetching one service and if a slug exists so we can find that out const router equals use router okay so we're just using router from next router if router query slug exists I'm going to await and then we need to define my Wix client again. So in fact, we can just get it from here. So the search page, just gonna get rid of that. I'm literally just gonna copy this. We should probably put this in another file. I will do that in a bit. And I'm just gonna paste that up here. And this time we need services, we need availability calendar, and we also need redirects from here. Okay, so that's what we need. Redirects. Have we imported redirects? Oh, no. Okay, so we need this from bookings. And then we're going to import redirects from Wix redirects. And we just literally installed. So we've got those three. That's the three that we want. So let's await my Wix client services, query services. And then we're going to look in our services for something that equals. And then we're going to find the main slug name. 
Let's make this smaller and do decode URI component. And then we're going to pass through essentially the router query slug. So we're going to literally pass through this and search for it in here by its slug, because that's the unique identifier. So that's the wisest thing to search by. And then of course, we're going to do find and call it. Cool. So great. And let's uh, save this under something. So I'm going to save this as service item singular, because we can only expect one because the slug is unique. And then I'm simply going to set service. So we're going to save this in state service item. So let's actually define that here, const service, set service, use state. And we'll start off with the state being null. Cool. So hopefully that makes sense and has passed through that service item so we can save it to the state. Great. So that's how we would fetch a service. I'm going to put this in a use effect. So here we go use effect fetch service and every time I guess the slug changes we want to call that so let's just check this works right I'm going to console log service singular I'm just going to put the word service here in front in case we have any other console logs there now if I refresh this you should see the one service showing up here and in items, there it is. So we are indeed getting that service. That is good. I'm going to go into items, however. So let's go into items. So all I'm going to do is go items and get that first item because we are just going to get one. So there we go. There is our one item. Nice. And now from here, we want to get the availability too. So let's do it. I'm going to write another uh, function here. So const fetch availability. And we're going to have to search for availability. Uh, essentially, we can do it by the, let's say last week. Let's say we only want to show the week. So obviously in your dashboard, you can have loads and loads of dates, but we just want to show for the week. So one week, uh, I guess, starting today. So let's define today, const today equals the new date object. And const one week in the future is going to be new date. Uh, let's pass through today, but then let's also grab one week. Or can we do it here? Set date. one week dot get date plus seven so if we console log that's right one week uh i'm just going to put this in a use effect as well so just delete that use effect and we're going to essentially if service exists we are going to fetch availability uh, and then we're going to actually rerun this every time the service changes. So let's check it out. For now, we should just be getting one week. So one week from today is this date. That is good. I just want to check if I just chain this on, if this will work still. No, that does not seem to work, I guess, because we define it here. So fair enough. OK, we'll just keep it like that. Cool. So now, once we already defined today and one week ahead, we can pass through those dates. So this time I'm going to await my Wix client services. Uh, do we want services this time? We want, no, we don't. We want the availability calendar this time. Query availability. Availability. Uh, and then availability. I'm going to not pass through this. 
let's open this up and I'm going to pass through, I'm going to filter, right? So I'm going to get the service ID and just pass through whatever the service ID is, right? Because we got the service up here. We're then going to filter availability by this service, right? So we're going to look for the ID so that we know which uh, class we are looking for. We're going to pass through the start date, which is going to be today. And we're going to do it to ISO string. Maybe let's put this on separate lines. And then we're also going to pass through the end date, which is one week to ISO string. And the other thing we need to pass through is the time zone. I'm just going to do UTC. So great. That is looking good. And once the, all of that is done, I'm going to set uh, availability entry. So let's actually maybe define that up here too. So I'm going to do const availability entries set availability entries i'm going to keep it as an empty array and then we're going to override that so down here set availability entries and i'm going to get the availability if i can only spell it let's actually also define that up here so whatever comes back here will save as availability so i'm going to grab that pass that through and get the availability entries. Cool. So that should now give us the availability entries. Let's check it out. I'm just going to do console log availability entries. Again, I'm just going to make that a string so it's obvious. And now down here, Ta-da, we get all the availability entries for the platform. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. We've got the service got the service essentially to get the ID and then we're using the ID to get the availability entries for the platform so that we can then map it out onto little cards. So let's get to styling this page next. Let's do it. So what I'm going to do is just return and then I'm going to essentially let's make a empty wrapping container and if service exists I am going to then show an article. Uh, let's give this the class name service singular container. I'm going to make a div. Let's give this the class name info container. This is going to have a main image, which I'm going to actually make as a component this time. So I'll just comment that out because we need to actually create that. And then I'm going to just use the information that we have. So the service name. So once again, the service name. I'm going to create a P element that has the service tag line. Another P element that has the so this description so again we're just using stuff from that object uh, then i'm going to make a hairline element for a line and then i'm going to put h3 and this is going to show the schedule right and the schedule well, we want to map that out we want to map out essentially the availability entries so available entries map thank you very much and each availability let's go with entry I'm going to map out onto a card. So in fact, I'm going to create a, let's put this on a new line, schedule card component. And we're going to pass through the availability entry into that, right? So we're going to get that. We're just going to pass it through like so. And then I'm also actually going to um, get the key from this. So where is the Here's the availability entry. I want to get this, uh, so the zero, and use that as a key. And to do that, I'm going to use object keys. So key equals, uh, I'm going to get object keys, availability entry. And that should get me the object key and just assign it to the key. 
So that's all I am going to do on the scheduled card. In fact, we should probably just comment all of this out now until we get the scheduled card made. Uh, and next, uh, actually after this whole info container, I'm going to create a address container. So I'm going to give this the class name of address container. And I am also going to have a mini map here. And if you pass through the longitude and latitude, so mini map, again, I will be creating this later. And apart from that, I'm going to just have a P element that is essentially going to show the location. So we need to essentially, let's get up the service again. Go into here, go into locations, and then get the business address formatted. We'll get the city and the country too. So let's go ahead and do that. So what was it? It was service locations. Go into the first item. Business address for matted. So that is one. I'm just going to put this cool font icon here too. You can get it uh, from my code. And then I'm going to, let's just copy this because it's essentially the same. We're just going to change this to be city and then do it again. So in a P element and change this to be country okay cool so it won't look like much now but we're getting all the information next let's style it up let's put in an image and let's also put in a map as well as map out all the things on two little cards so let's maybe create the cards first so in the components i'm going to create a new file this is going to be a schedule card js const Schedule card, let's make it bigger. Export default schedule card. And this is going to return a button essentially, because if you click on it, it should redirect you. So it's going to be a button. And in the button, I'm going to have uh, the start day. So what do we want? To, what are we passing through into the Schedule card again, passing through the the whole availability entry, okay. So all of these, we're going to use the start date. So first off, let's pass through the availability entry making sure that is spelled relatively correctly and now i'm actually going to use moment in order to format these a little bit better so i'm just going to do npm i moment moment is a great library for formatting dates in a more readable fashion so that's what i've chosen to do so now i'm just going to import moment from moment okay now um, let's actually go ahead and import everything else we need to import here. So, in fact, we're going to have to import a few of these. So I'm just going to get these, paste them here and delete the ones we don't need. So we don't need the, well, actually we need all of these. Okay, so let's just keep those. We're passing through the availability entry. We're also going to need my Wix client. So let's just paste that in up here. Uh, we need to get all these three things as well. So that is fine. And then let's use the availability entry start date. And I'm going to essentially define a start date that is more readable. So I'm going to use moment and pass through the availability entry slot start date because that's what it is it's slot 
start date and it looks like this and I'm going to change the format of it. I'm just going to also pass through here for the time. So H H M M S S. Okay. So now I can essentially define the start day and I'm going to use the start date up here and reformat it. So I'm going to use format so that we get the day, the first three letters of the day, like Monday, Tuesday, Weds. Then we get the month and then we get the year. Okay, so console. So in fact, maybe let's just put it in here now. I'm just going to do start date. And you will see that oh, we need to actually map that out first. So I'll oh, start day, sorry. So onto the schedule card, I'm just going to uncomment this out now because we can officially map onto the scheduled card now. Let's just import it up here. Import schedule card from schedule card. Start, start date format is not a function. Let's go back in here. Ah, that's because we don't format this. Sorry, tab nine, you tripped us up. Okay, there we go. That is what it should look like. And that's how we reformat it to literally get the three letters of the day, we get the month and then we get the year. How about for month? It doesn't really seem to be working. Why is that? Uh, so that should be capital M. Maybe it's getting confused with the minutes there. But otherwise, I think this is looking good. I'm quite happy with that. Cool, so those are our buttons. Let's add some more information here. So we've got the start day. The next thing I wanna do is get the start time. So let's define the start time of the class. So start time. And once again, I'm gonna get the start date format. And then what do we want? We do actually want that tab nine. So let's keep that. And let's get the end time too. So const end time equals start date format and then we're going to pass through the availability slot end date from our data um, let's pass through this again and this time I'm just going to format Again, yeah, like that. So that is looking good to me. Let's check out if it looks right. So start time, end time. Whoops, make sure that is passed through moment. Okay, cool. That is looking good. Okay, that was Oh, amazing. So we've done it. We've created those three buttons. Let's style them up a little bit more. Um, well, actually, maybe let's get the, yeah, okay, let's style this up and then let's work on the main image and the map. I think we've done a lot. Uh, let's take a quick break with some styling. So in here, let's work on the service, individual service page. So what do we need to get? Well, let's work on the service container first that wraps everything. Um, I'm going to actually space it out from the top so that it's away from the header that is covering some information. Uh, I'm also going to initialize Flexbox, right? So that we can center everything. So justify content center. So at the moment, it will kind of look like this and everything's from left to right. So the two containers. Now I'm going to say that the info container that lives inside the service container, so dot info container, it's going to have a width of 700 pixels max and a padding of five pixels. Uh, so there we go. That's the info container. Uh, and also let's get the address container this time. So the thing on the right, so dot address container. And this one, let's give it a width of 300 pixels and a padding of five pixels too. Next, we're going to grab the service container. Um, and we will have a main image. So maybe let's deal with that when we get to it though. I think the other thing that we need to do is 
yeah maybe add a class to these buttons so let's give this the class name of schedule card button let's pick out the schedule card button and i'm going to do display flex justify content i'm going to do space between so that everything in these buttons is kind of spaced out but of course we need to also make the width a hundred percent of the parent for that to kind of take effect so cool this is already looking so much better what else do we want to do these buttons uh i think mm, border none that's kind of cool right maybe let's add a pointer so cursor pointer just so we know that we can actually click on them uh, and let's also give each one a border bottom solid one pixel rgb 236 236 236 uh, and then yeah let's make the background color white actually i've changed my mind rgb 255 255 255 Okay, so already that is looking cool. I quite like that. Uh, I think it's obvious that you can select them, right? And it looks kind of neat. Let's carry on. So we've got the address, we've got the schedule. Now let's work on the redirect. So if we click it, it goes to the booking page. So back in here on this slug. Or oh, actually on the schedule card itself, let's do it here. I'm going to create a redirect. So let's define const create redirect. It's an async function. And const, yep, that's correct. Const redirect await. Uh, this is not quite so right. Not services, just my Wix client redirects. And then we're going to create read direct session um and in here we're not going to pass through a url we're going to create redirect session just making sure that's spoke correctly we are going to get a bookings checkout slot availability and pass through the time zone as UTC, so to match what we did above, callbacks, post flow URL, window, location, href. Um, cool, and then once that is done, we don't want to return redirect, we just want to get the window, location, and use redirect, redirect session full URL. So let's check it out. So on a click of the button, we are going to create redirect and pass through the availability entry that we are working with, right? Just make sure that says on click. So now if I click on one of these, slot availability not defined. Ah, that's because we need to pass it through into here as the availability entry. And now if we click on one of these, it should take us to the login callback page. So we need to create that. So once again, this time where the search is, I'm going to create a new file and this is going to be login callback.js. Let's import a bunch of stuff that we've been importing everywhere and we really should clean up, but I'm just going to roll with it for now. Let's import this. Let's import use state and use effect from React and import cookies from JS Cookie. Next, I'm also going to just take the Wix client. So let's grab that and put it in here. This time, what do we need? We don't need any modules actually. So let's delete that and let's define a login callback. So login callback and in here, 
I'm just going to save some stuff to state. So const next page, set next page, start off with it being null, const error message, set error message. Tab 9 is being really helpful here. Const verify login. Um, this is going to be an async function. I'm going to use JSON parse because we're going to get the local storage this time. So let's get local storage, get item. We're going to get the O auth redirect data. Uh, and let's just save this as data. And then I'm going to go to local storage, remove item, O auth redirect data. So cool. That is looking good. And then we're going to try. Again, this part is going to be from the documentation. I'm going to use my works client. I'm going to get auth parse from URL. Uh, let's also get code and state from this. So just like that, let's call this. And then let's get the tokens. Await my Wix client auth get member tokens. That is the method that we need. We're going to get code state and we're going to pass through data as well. Um, cool. While there are no tokens, so we're checking if tokens exist. We're also going to check if refresh token exists. We're going to get its value. So if the value does not exist, we're going to override tokens again. So just in case, that is kind of just a quick fix. Now I'm going to get the cookies and set the session. To be the token, right? So JSON stringify tokens. Let's not have an expire. You can add that if you want. And then we're going to get the window location. And if data exists, we're going to get the original URI or just go to the home page. And then we're going to catch any errors. So catch error, set next page to be essentially this or the home page, and then set error message to be the error to string. Amazing. And then let's put this in a use effect, just like so. And then let's just return. I'm going to return an article that if an error message exists, then I'm going to yeah show the error message or if next page exists, then we're going to show continue href next page. Otherwise, if it doesn't, we just display the word loading dot dot dot, just like that. Just make sure use effect is spelled correctly there. And now if we click on one of these and you will see it go to Anya3941. This is the login callback that we wrote. So essentially, thanks to here. So here we are on the headless settings. And then the settings for the auth, so the OAuth app. 
thanks to this right here, that is what is allowing us to essentially go to this page. This is the login callback. So just make sure to have your own URL here, forward slash login callback. Cool. So hopefully you're seeing this now, and now you can literally make a booking, okay? You can give in your name, your email, your phone number, and add a message, and pay now. You can also personalize this further if you want, that's totally up to you. I'm just gonna leave it as it is, and then we can also choose to log in as well. So you can choose to log in. I'm just gonna choose to log in with Anya at codewithania.com. So I'm just going to create that login and then it will show my name we can also just go back so now i am back and we can also choose to display my name if we are logged in if you actually look at application you will see that here under cookies there is a session id meaning that we are currently logged in as ania Okay, so maybe let's work on that next. I want it to show my name up here just so that we know we are logged in. Let's do that. So I'm just going to delete this session token for now. So I'm just gonna delete it, delete that token. So we've named it session and added a token and we've added it to the cookies. These are our cookies, thanks to essentially every time we set cookies. So cookie set session and then the token ID that we just deleted. Okay, great. Let's move on. So on the app, what we need to do is edit the login bar. So this one right here, which at the moment just says login bar. Let's minimize this. Just gonna move this down. I'm gonna import a few things. So in fact, let's import this. I'm also going to import members from at Wix members. Let's also import use effect and use state from react and import cookies from JS cookie. Cool, once again, we're gonna need my Wix clients. I'm just going to copy this. I'm gonna paste it in here. We're just going to get members and pass it through here. And that's it. So we just wanna get the member name for when we are logged in. And we wanna also be able to log in and log out. So maybe let's just get rid of everything here. I'm gonna put this in a div. Let's give this the class name. I'm gonna reuse the class name of item container. So this is the same class name that essentially holds everything in our header. Uh, I'm gonna have a P tag that just says hello, and we're gonna pass through the user. So we're gonna actually set the user uh, to state. So let's do that up here, const user set user. Uh, we don't need that, that was added to me by tab nine, but it is incorrect, so I've just deleted that. Great, so we have one item container. Next, I'm also going to show a button essentially. So let's create a button. And in fact, we need to put this in a wrapping div, so I'm just gonna put an empty element just like so for now or maybe let's make it a nav because we're gonna have one element a button so it's kind of a navigation uh it's up to you you don't have to put a nav if you don't think it is and then i'm gonna have a third element here just making sure that it's on the same correct formatting so i'm just gonna do that and tab that out and this one also is gonna have the class name of item container just like so this one, this item container is gonna hold a button. Uh, and this button, let's give it the class name of primary and the text try for free. Just gonna space that out because I wanna also add an on click to this. 
And if we click on this, I want to log in. So I'm going to write a login function. Uh, in fact, we don't need that. We can just do log in like that. And let's write that function. So const login, it is going to be an async function. So I'll accept that. And then I'm just going to use my Wix client. So my Wix client here, and I'm going to get a method from it. That method is auth, and I'm going to generate auth data. So that's correct. And all I'm going to pass through is whatever location we are in. So I'm going to pass through the window. Location origin forward slash login. Call back, making sure to spell it exactly the same as we did. So this is just from the documentation, right? And then I'm going to pass through the window location href. Next, I'm going to set something in local storage. So I'm going to get local storage. I'm going to set item to be o auth redirect data and then json stringify data. Cool. I'm also going to save the return of this as just data so that whatever comes back here, we are passing through into here and saving it in local storage under this property. Next, we're again going to use my Wix client, this time to get auth and then the method of get auth URL and again, pass through the data and the return of this. We're going to have to wait for this. This is an async method and we're going to just get the auth URL from here. So auth URL. Okay, cool. And once we have that auth URL, I'm going to get the window location and just assign the auth URL to it. So Wix auth will essentially send the user back to the callback page. So login dash callback, thanks to this so that we can log in. Okay. So that is our login function. Uh, let's also write a log out function. So const log out again, this is an async method uh, and I'm going to use my Wix client. I'm going to use auth, but this time I'm going to get the log out method uh, and then I'm going to pass through the window location href and then the return of this. We're going to have to await this as it's an async method and we're going to get the logout URL this time from here. And then we're going to go get the cookies and we're going to remove all the cookies, right? Because we want to remove the session. So just like I deleted it manually, we're now going to be deleting it with code. We're going to remove it so that it removes that token. So our authentication token. And then I'm going to do window location logout URL. Cool. So that's how we log in and log out. And now I'm just going to actually write another button. So we've got a button to try for free. This button, however, um, we only want to show the login button if there is no member, right? So first, actually, we have to define a member. So let's fetch the member. So up here, I'm going to write const fetch member. Again, this is an async function. I'm going to use my Wix client auth logged in. We're going to check, so we're going to call that. And if this is true, we're going to await my Wix client dot members get my member singular. So just like that. So if we're logged in, we're going to get the member. So essentially we want to get that, that member and the member name and everything. Otherwise we just have an empty object. Uh, and then we're going to use set member. So in fact, I'm going to define that up here, set member, or sorry, member set member use state uh, null. And then we're going to use set member to change it from being null to whatever comes back from here. Okay. So let's actually get the member from this object. So I'm going to go into that object and get the member from it. And then we're going to set member with member or 
undefined. Okay, cool. So that's all we're going to do. Now I'm going to fetch the member in a use effect. So let's pass that through into a use effect. Use effect fetch members or fetch member singular. Sorry, let's make sure that is singular as we're just fetching one and then pass through an MD dependency. Great. The other thing we need to do is set the username, right? So depending on if we are logged in or logged out, we want to either show the username or visitor. And again, I'm going to put this in a use effect. So use effect. And I'm just going to write if my Wix client auth is logged in and that is true. I'm going to set user to be well, if member exists, I'm going to go and find the profile of that member. So this is just the object member and get the nickname that that member has set for its him themselves, or I can either use the member profile slug or just an empty string. So we're literally getting the nickname of the member and if that doesn't exist, the slug. And if that doesn't exist, then we're just going to get the empty string. Else, if we are not logged in, I'm going to set user back to be visitor. Okay, great. And I want this to run essentially uh, if this changes or if the user changes or if the member profile nickname changes or if the member profile slug changes. Cool. This should be dot dot. So once again, I'm just going to delete this. Cool. So we've got hello visitor here. Great. Let's just delete these as we don't need that. And let's start off with the user being the string visitor. And then let's style it up a little bit more. So all I am going to do is on the global CSS, let's work on the nav. So I'm just going to comment that out. And the nav itself, I'm just going to use display flex to make sure that flexbox is initiated and everything kind of displays from left to right. So there we go. And then let's also finish off this button. So on here, this button right here, I'm actually going to display certain things based on if we are logged in or not. So. I'm going to wrap this in some curly braces. If member does not equal null, then we show the button. And then depending on, so we'll get my Wix client auth logged in and call it. So if we are logged in, we'll display the text log out. Otherwise, let's display the text log in. Okay. And then also the on click as well. That's going to change depending on if we are logged in or not. I'm going to format this a little bit better. But for now, here's the button. So on click. Let's do a callback function. I'm going to say that if my Wix client is logged in, so question mark, then I want to log out. Otherwise, I want to log in. Cool. So it looks like this. Let's carry on styling it up. So back in here. I'm just going to say that any P element that lives inside my nav is going to have the font size of 14 pixels. Let's grab the nav. I'm going to get the button. And if the button has the class of log in, I'm going to say border none, give it a padding of 10 pixels, give it a background color of transparent. And now let's get the nav button login on hover. 
and just change that to be maybe a gray. So I'm going to pass it two for one, two for one, two for one. Cool. And now also, I'm going to grab each item container, so everything with the class of item container. I'm going to initialize Flexbox. I'm going to align items in the center. So I'm going to use align item center from top to bottom and also add a margin of zero on the top and bottom and 10 pixels from the left and right. So great. We are nearly done. We just need to make sure that this button also has the class name of login that we just started. So class name login. Just make sure this is installed. So just go up your terminal and do npm i Wix members to make sure that is installed. Great. So save that and that is looking much better. Okay, cool. And if we click on here, it should take us to this login page so that we can log in. And of course, we if we are already logged in, so log in with Google, and because that session token is there, we should see our name. Also make sure to export this. So export default login callback. It should say, hello, Anya Kubo, and I can log out. This will simply just clear the cookie. So in application here, you're essentially gonna clear this session. So log out. And there we go, that is now deleted and it will say hello visitor again. So that's what we have done, amazing. This is looking good. Let's carry on. So we can now log in, log out. We can also actually purchase classes from here and that will be managed on the Wix website. The last thing I wanna do is just put in some maps and we're gonna be doing that thanks to Mapbox. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna do that. Uh, let's first put in the little map into here. So if you don't have an account with Mapbox already, please go ahead and head over to Mapbox and just sign up and create a token. So I'm just gonna sign up with you. I'm just gonna click on sign up. Let's go with Anya Kubo, Anya at codewithanya.com. Let's just go ahead and do Anya Kubo and use a strong password and just agree to this. Okay, this is already taken, so let's do one. Great, wonderful, and let's create our account. Refresh this page, and then it'll just ask you what industries you're in. So for this, I guess I'm going to just put hobbyist, primary goals, add maps, I'll handle development myself, and then I'm gonna put web. Great, and there we go. So we need to create a token. So let's go ahead and do tutorial. I'm gonna call it tutorial and it's gonna delete all of those. That is correct. And I'm just going to create that token. Okay, once again, I'll just ask you for your password and we should be good to go with that token. So yeah, you can use your public default one or you can use this one, it's up to you. Just go ahead and copy one. And then in the .env file, I'm just going to add it. So I'm going to go next public map box equals and then just paste it like that. Cool. So now let's use it. I'm actually going to create a mini map in components. I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call it minimap.js. And let's go ahead and just clear a bunch of this stuff up. So we just have the mini map. Now let's actually export our component. So const mini map equals, and then we're going to do default export mini map and return. For now, I'm just going to create a div. This should, of course, say export default. And this div, I'm going to give it the class name of mini map container. Okay, so there you go. Now let's import a few things. So I'm going to import map 
box from, and we're going to actually have to install Mapbox GL. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's get up our terminals. And I'm just going to go in here and do npm i Mapbox GL, making sure your Next.js class bar. So make sure that is the case. And I'm also going to import a style sheet. So I'm going to import, import Mapbox GL dist. Mapbox GL CSS. So that we have the styling for our map. There's loads of styles you can choose from. That's just the generic one. And I'm also going to import use effect and use ref from React. Okay. Now our mini map. In order for this to work, we're going to have to create a div and give this a reference. So this reference is going to be map container. And now let's use ref. So I'm going to use ref to define the map container use ref. And that's essentially going to go in here. So we've referenced that and we used ref up here from React. Next, I'm just going to get mapbox that we have just got from mapbox GL. And I'm going to assign an access token. We're going to go into process env and we're going to get our next. public map box token. Okay, so that's just what we called it in the dot env file. If you want to make sure that it's spelled correctly, maybe just copy and paste that so it's really obvious. Great. Now let's use a use effect in order to actually get the map and assign it a longitude and latitude as well as a zoom. So we're going to use use effect. This is just from the documentation. And we're essentially going to pass through a longitude and a latitude. So for now, I'm just going to hard code it. So const long equals. And then let's just pick something where we can just pick it from, you know, an existing service that we have. So let's go to booking services. Let's go to the platform. Okay, and this will come back with a longitude and latitude that we're going to take. So in fact, if we console log this out. So on the service here, you will see that under the location, We get a longitude latitude. So I'm just going to steal that for now so we can hard code it. Like I said, here we go. There's a longitude and const lat equals let's just swap them around long lat. And it just means that now, uh, this is the code we need. This is just from the documentation. Every time long and lat change, we're going to check if map current exists. So if there is a map, we just return out of this. And map is, well, we're going to have to define that as well. Const map equals use ref null. And if a longitude exists, we're just going to grab one of them. I'm going to get the map. We're going to assign the current map and create a new map box map and pass through some things. So we're going to pass through the container, which is just going to be the container where we want to show the map. So map container current. The style of this is going to be sure we can have this one. In fact, I'm going to change it to be 12 just because I like that style. The center is going to be the longitude and latitude and zoom, let's put as 50. Cool. So that's what we're going to do. And I'm just going to start this up a little bit too. So down here, let's go with mini map. Let's grab the mini map container. So the thing that's going to hold our map, I'm going to assign a height of 300 pixels, a width of 300 pixels. Uh, let's round off a bit. So I'm going to go border radius. 
five pixels and then hide any overflow so overflow hidden which means that the div inside the minimap container so essentially this div right here I'm just going to give it a width of 100%, a height of 100%. So it takes up the whole thing. So great. So for now, I'm just going to import that mini container onto the slug. So let's import mini map from components. In fact, I'm just going to, you know, write the path. So components mini map and I'm going to get that mini map and just use it there so great there we have it I'm just going to hide this as well as I don't like it so to do that I'm just going to grab map box gl compact basically all I've done is inspect this actual map and figure out what this component is called, right? So Mapbox GL Compact, and I'm just going to do display none. So that's kind of a hack, really. Okay, so there we go. There it is. And I can also put a little marker on it if I wish. So to do this, I'm just going to do that down here. Let's define the marker. So const marker equals new mapbox gl marker and let's also pass through some stuff so i'm going to pass through the color that i want the marker to be i'm going to pass through rgb uh, it's just like the blue that we have in our theme and now i'm just going to set the long and lat and pass through the long and lat i'm going to add to the map current Okay, however, we imported it up here. This should probably be GL. So I'll change it to GL as well as here, GL. Now let's have a look. Great, and there we have it. There's our marker. This is looking fantastic. The next thing I want to do is just put in a main image. So let's do that. I'm going to create that to be a component too for each individual slug. So let's do it. Once more, I'm just going to create a new file. I'm going to call this main image.js. And before moving on, instead of hard coding the long and lat, I'm just going to pass it through as props. So L and G L A T, which means that on the slug, I need to pass them through as well. So L and G equals, and we're going to go into the services. So I'll perhaps just put this on a new line. We'll check if the service exists. Well, actually, we're already wrapping it in the service, so it has to exist. So we don't need to check if it exists. We're just going to get the service. We we'll go into locations and then get the first item from there and then get the business address location longitude. OK, so just like we were doing previously, this time we're just getting the longitude and the latitude. So in fact, I'm just going to copy that, uh, change this to be lat, and then change this to be latitude, just like that. Great. So this is looking good. And save that. So now the map should be different for each slug. And let's continue working on the main image. So let's define main image. Cool. Let's do export default main image and let's return something right so i'm just gonna create a div and inside is going to be an image and you guessed it that's actually going to show the main image perhaps as the alternative text yeah let's just have a main image for now uh, and then i'm going to actually import media from wix api client so import media from at Wix API client. And now, just like we did with the previous images, let's define our image. I'm going to use media that we just got from up there. Get 
image URL and I'm going to pass through well we're going to pass through the service into here and then we're going to get the media main media image okay so let's pass through the actual whole service and now I can just get the image and get its URL uh, let's give this a class name too. I'm going to give this a class name of main image container so we can style it up a little bit. But on here, of course, we also need to actually pass through that whole service into the main image. So I'm just going to go service and pass through the whole service. So just like that. And of course, let's import it. So import main image from and then i'm just going to do the actual path components main image so great let's style it up a little bit so let's find the service container and i'm just going to say that the element with the class name of main image container that lives inside of it it's going to have the following styling i'm going to make sure that each one is 750 pixels width a height of 500 pixels, overflow, hidden, and let's round off a bit. I'm going to do border radius 5 pixels. Okay, cool. And of course, we also need to do whatever the image inside is going to look like. So the image inside, I'm just going to give this a height of 90%. Great. So now let's look at that. This is looking wonderful. If you want, we can even go bigger. So perhaps let's go bigger, 150%, just to make sure that image always fits. And actually, we should probably make it the same size as the info container. So where is the main image container? Let's make it 700. Okay, so that is looking much better. I'm happy with this. Final map is just on the home page. So let's go here to where we can see all of these and let's put a map in here. So let's do it. So let's also create a component called map.js and I'm going to copy a bunch of stuff. So in fact, I am going to just copy all of this and paste it in like so. And let's define our map. So const map equals like so. And let's do export default map uh, we are also going to take a bunch of stuff from here so let's grab these these things i'm just going to paste them in like so let's return a div give this the class name of map container so not mini map container and in here i'm going to have another div and let's give this the ref of map container that we defined up there. I'm also just going to start this up now while we are at it. So where all the map stuff is. So here's our mini map. I'm also just going to do map and clear that now. So let's grab the map container. I'm going to give this a height of 100 of the viewport height and a width of 50 of the viewport width. Okay, and any div that lives inside of it, I'm just going to, again, just give it a width of 100% and a height of 100%. Cool. So let's carry on. Again, we're going to have to write a use effect. So let's go ahead and do that. Just pass through the dependencies. And this time we're going to pass through some coordinates. Uh, but we are also going to map a few. So that's why I'm going to pass through a lot of coordinates, right, for all of my services. So let's do that. Coords, and let's define coords on the app page. So let's get up this page. So that's going to be on one of the pages. It's actually the search page. So we can get rid of that. And now let's define our coords. So let coords. And I'm going to get the whole service list, so service list, this whole thing of all my services. And I'm going to use map and I'm going to get each service, let's call it item. And for each service item, 
I'm going to go into locations, get that first item back, get the business, get the address, and get the location. Okay, so that's all I'm doing. And now into the map, I'm just going to pass through those cohorts. So cohorts equals cohorts. Okay, and now let's import the map. So import map from components. So now on the actual map itself, if I console log those cohorts, we should be able to see. See, we're just getting two objects. So those are the cohorts we want to essentially map onto the map. So once again, if a map already exists, I just want to return out of this. And if cohorts, let's just go with first item exists longitude and the latitude exists so latitude then we want to get the map current new map box let's create a new map let's create the container first so i'm going to use map container current the style i'm going to change to 12 and the center is indeed going to be the cohorts longitude and the latitude and zoom i'm going to put 30. so great and when are we going to change this i think we should change it every time the longitude or latitude changes for the first item so great there is our map we just need to position it to the right So what is the wrapping element for all of these? So what's wrapping our map? It's the search container. So here do we have the search container? We do not. I'm just going to probably do so. Let's just do it up here. You can do it wherever you want. So let's just do it at the bottom actually. So search bar container, display flex. So that will ensure that they are next together. Great, now let's map some markers, right? So all I'm gonna do is get those cohorts. So after this finishes, so here, cohorts for each Award. I'm going to create a marker, so const marker, new map box marker. I'm just going to pass through, well, the color once more. So the color I want to do is RGB 286254. Making sure that is actually wrapped like so. And then I'm going to set long and lat and get each of the longitude and latitude and then i'm going to do add to map current okay cool so if we refresh this now those markers are added great so there is one and i'm sure you can find the other okay wonderful this is looking so so good i'm so happy with this of course we should probably make this 50 percent of the width as well. So what is that? It's the results container. I'm going to get that results container and give it a width of 50 of the viewport width as well. Just so it's kind of like 50 50. This is looking great. Maybe we can even make this 60 40. As I think that looks better. Wonderful. One thing I am going to do is just replace this login. It's just going to take me to the uh, main page, I think, instead. So I'm just going to swap that out. So I think it should take me here. And I'm just going to wrap both in a link. Element just like that. So it's going to go to the search page. just like so. And I'm going to do the same for this one as well. I'm just going to wrap it in a link element and format it a bit better. Okay. 
So that will just take you to the home page now. And let's maybe style this up. So in fact, maybe I'll give this link the class name of primary and this link the class name of secondary and get rid of that button element, which means we also should probably free that class name so that it doesn't matter if it's on a button or not. So I think I did that up here. Let's just go with anything with a class of primary and anything with a class of secondary and give them both a margin of five pixels. Okay. Great. Actually, just change a few things around just because that's the way I prefer them. So I'm just going to write the path to this. And I'm also going to put this in a helper file. So all I'm going to do is actually, and perhaps let's do it on the same level as the .env file. I'm going to create a new file, call it helpers.js. And I'm just going to literally write all of this. And we're going to import a bunch of other stuff. So that is the search page. Don't need the mini map. Don't need the main image on the slug. We're also going to pass through all these three things into here, not just the services, which means we need to then import all of these things as well. So that is already done for me. Let's do export const. Which means I can delete that. And I'm just going to import my Wix client from back helpers.js. Great, which means I think we can get rid of all that. I'm just going to check everything works. So on the card, doesn't seem we need to do much. The login bar, members. So let's pass through members as well into here. So members, just getting everything. So log that out and import my Wix client from helpers. Let's get the schedule card. Yeah, I'm just going to comment these things out. Import my Wix client from Helpers, search bar doesn't need it. The search icon doesn't need, need it. And I feel we are now good, nearly to go. Import my Wix client from Helpers. And on the search page to import my Wix client from helpers. And we just need to import cookies into that helper file as well. Okay, great. And everything seems to be working as it should. Okay, so now I'm just going to clean up that code, essentially remove everything that I have console logged out, clean it up and share it with you as well. So please check it out in the description below for the final code if you want to use it.
Just a final thing I want to do is add texture recreation none to the primary button as well as on the secondary button. I also want to prevent scrolling on the Y axis here of the actual app itself, meaning you can't scroll up and down. And then let's add a scroll to this area once it has filled out so we can scroll through all the available services. So I'm going to add overflow scroll on this element. So go all the way down here overflow scroll and make it important as well as just assign a height as well so that it knows what to scroll to great so there we have it there it is all filled out i can of course type for services uh let's go with trans yoga this is looking wonderful and then we can actually see the class let's also add a scroll to this so let's inspect this. What is this in? It's in a service container. So let's add this and find the service container. So there we go. And there's two classes. This is all looking wonderful. I'm really happy with this. And that's it. Thank you so much for coding along with me. I hope this was useful and I hope that you've enjoyed building out a fully functioning booking site. Please take this to the next level. This is, of course, like a very basic one. There's so much styling you can do and there's so much more functionality you can add. Like this will fully work. And please go ahead and deploy it as well. I can't wait to hear what you think of it.